Yeah, hi there. These comments are for 8343. This is Michael. I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT. And you just completed, it looks like, my pronunciation post-test for the pronunciation section of the course. And I'm going to give you some feedback on that right now. They tend to stand a specific distance back apart. Each person has an invisible boundary around his or her body into which other people may not come. If someone bears this boundary, she or he will feel uncomfortable and move away to increase the distance between them. Good word stress. Now, when you're reading this, you're putting a little bit too much emphasis on all of the words in your sentences. So that's sentence rhythm. You definitely want to work on that a little bit. The major exhibition is family members and other loved ones. This personal distance is not due to bad odor or bad breath, but because closeness lends a sense of intimacy that is at odds with the relationship to the other individual. Now, one other thing you want to be careful about, for example, the word lens. You have lens a sense of intimacy. You don't want to pause after the word lens. You want to link that to the next word, the next sound, which is the article A, right? So lens a sense of intimacy. So that's blending. So you want to work a little bit more on your blending, too. B, interestingly, the average... I put the stress there interestingly. In interestingly. Personal distance varies from culture to culture. Americans tend to require more, more personal space than in other cultures. Therefore, if you try to get too close to an American during your conversation, he or she will feel that you are in his space and will try to back away. Try to be aware of this, so of the person to whom you are speaking back away a little, don't try to close the gap. Now, what you're doing is, when you're reading this, you want to pause after certain words. Typically, four or five stress words, you have a pause. That's a thought group. Then you have another four or five stress words, you have another pause. That's a second thought group. So, when you read that last sentence, you say, this personal distance is not due to body odor or bad breath, but because closeness lends a... Uh... Now, let me read it. This personal distance is not due to body odor or bad breath, but because closeness lends a sense of intimacy that is at odds with the relationship to the other individual. So, the difference is is within the thought group, I'm not pausing as much. I'm using blending within the thought group instead of pausing after every word. So you're pausing after the words within the thought group even. See, also, try to avoid by bicycles contact. The word there is physical. The PH is actually an F sound there. Physical contact. While you are speaking, since this may also lead to discomfort, to discomfort. The stress there is actually discomfort. You actually put stress on that prefix, discomfort. Touching is a bit too intimate for casual acquaintances. So the that was a little bit hard for you, so casual acquaintances. Acquaintances. But, but you are around his or her shoulder. Don't touch his or her face or hold his, his or her hand. Now, you say the word face. Face is a longer vowel sound, so it's not just face, face, but face, face, face. Shaking hands when you intently meet or part is acceptable, but this is only meant. Okay, now let's go to your responses to the three questions.
Okay, here we go. First question. Who is your best friend? Why is this person important to you? I have a lot of friends, but one of them is my best friend. He is from Saudi Arabia, and his name is Olayan Al-Harbi. He is develops knowledge in technology. Through his study in this field, he is important to me because we are sharing the same interest and we have very close and similar personalities. The second question. Now, with this one, though, you, you said that you share similarities, so now it's a good time to demonstrate some of your vocabulary and, and talk about what those similarities are. So you need to be a little more specific in your ideas to help support those generalizations that you're using. Where do you see yourself five years from now? What will you be doing? Five years from now, I will be finished from studying my master degree in education. After that, I will pursue my studying to gain my PhD to go right. back cool. to my country, Saudi Arabia. All right. And important my experience in my field of so when you're speaking, I mean, if you hear what you're saying here, you're saying something like, when I finish my studies, I will go back to... You can't speak like that. That's not fluency. I mean, if you're speaking like that, people are going to pay more attention to how you say what you say than what you're saying what you're saying. So you have a lot of unnecessary pauses, I think, in your conversational language, and it's not sounding... Uh, very natural at all. Special education. Third question. What is your favorite season of the year? A lot of reason make summer my now, the other thing is with your tone, too. Your tone, it's almost like a half-pitch rise after every idea. So, my favorite season is fall. I like fall because fall is... But, typically, you want to make sure when you get to the end of your idea, your tone needs to fall, not rise, right? So, there's a combination of either falling or rising inflections at different parts of your ideas that help give you more of a natural sounding tone. My favorite season. First, I have the ability to travel anywhere. Second, I can practice my hobby like swimming in the sea because the weather is sunny. Third, I like to wear light clothing. All right, so I think we're done. So now let's take a look at two things. Number one, what is your intelligibility score and why? And then what specific lessons can you focus on to help improve your speaking and pronunciation of American English? Those are really the two big questions before us right now. Okay, so your intelligibility score... I'm going to put you at about 3.1 out of 7, and you can click on the link in the email to learn more about your intelligibility score, but in short, there's just too many pauses in there, and you're having a lot of problems with your tone, your sentence rhythm, and even your vocabulary and your grammar is a little bit basic, so I feel like you're a little bit limited in your expression of ideas in English because of your vocabulary and your grammar limitations. And it's also difficult to concentrate on what you say because of some of your pronunciation uh, problems. Okay, so, so the next question is, what lessons should you study to get better in the pronunciation area of my course? So I think I can pretty much answer that question 
uh, fairly quickly. Okay, I'm going to focus more on the second half of the pronunciation part of my course and give you some general ideas of some things that you can do uh, to improve. Now, of course, A, you can do nothing. And you can maintain and continue to speak the way you speak. Or B, uh, you can follow some specific suggestions right now to improve. So uh, let's take a look at the second part of my speak clearly part of my course. Uh, I think that you're definitely having some word stress issues. There are some word stress problems in your pronunciation right now. Study lessons 29, 30, 31, and 32. That will help you learn how to identify which syllable in the word should be stressed and how it should be stressed by making that syllable clearer, longer, louder, and higher pitched. Now, the second area of improvement that I see is your sentence rhythm. You need to do a little bit better with your sentence rhythm. Sentence rhythm is the combination of stress and unstress words. Remember, in your in your response that you recorded, you're putting too much emphasis on every word that you say. So take a look at lessons number 33, 34, and 35. Now the next area you want to improve on is your intonation. Remember, during your speech, you're putting a lot of rising inflection after almost every idea. And that's really not the right tone that we use in English. So you want to work on varying your tone more. So take a look at my lessons 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And then finally, because you're pausing so much and you're not really blending the words within your thought groups, it's very important for you to study my lessons 41, 42, 43, and 44, and that will give you some really good instruction on thought groups and blending. So those are the areas that you can improve in right now. If you can improve in those areas, you will sound more like a native speaker. Now, in addition to working uh, in my pronunciation course, I also recommend that you spend time each day watching TV in English, watch news programs, documentary programs, history programs, and science programs. And really pay attention to how the speakers are talking and even practice a little bit with the speakers on the TV. All right, so thank you for completing the, uh, the pronunciation post-test. Uh, I've enjoyed having you as a student at this quarter so far. Keep up the good work.